When I first saw the promotions for Squid Game, I thought it was going to be a light-hearted reality TV contestant show, kind of like Takeshi's Castle or something. But it was anything but, with the gritty battle royale having scenes that will haunt your dreams. Seriously, I'm still not over episode 6. The show, which has been a massive hit on Netflix, is packed full of easter eggs, foreshadowing, hidden details, and behind the scenes trivia. Some of which you may have missed the first time around, so we thought we'd take a look at them here. Let's go! Ooh, uh, now this is a given, but there will be many Squid Game spoilers in this video, so if you don't want to be eliminated from your spoiler-free game, I'd recommend coming back to this video after you finish the show. Now, let's start with the show's biggest twist, that Oh Il Nam, aka Player One, is actually the mastermind behind the games and the one who's running it from behind the scenes. While this was undoubtedly a shocking moment for many of us out there, myself included, there were actually many clues as to his real identity. For starters, the fact that the neighborhood in the Marble game looks so much like the one he grew up in as a child, uh, the fact that his number is 1 and that there are no other elderly players in the game, the fact that he has a deep knowledge about the games played, such as Tug of War, and is delighted playing Red Light Green Light despite all the violence happening around him. But there are some even bigger moments of foreshadowing that we missed the first time around. Such as the robotic girl scanner in Red Light Green Light not picking him up as a player, the fact that his name translated into English is Number One Man, and in the montage where multiple contestants are waiting for the van to re enter the game, they're all gassed except for Oh Il Nam, who just enters the van of his own volition. Also, in his conversation with Song Gi Hun, Oh Il Nam basically convinces him to rejoin the game and goes through his reasoning for why he wants to keep on playing. We really should have seen it coming. The knowledge of what the next game will entail is constantly sought after throughout the show, and players like the Doctor, who obtain information on the next game by providing favors, are eliminated due to it not being fair to the other players. However, every player had the opportunity to learn what game would be next if they paid close enough attention. That's because, on the walls of the dormitory where the players sleep, you can see murals of children playing different games all of which are played at some point in the show. If you look closely, you can see an illustration for Red Light Green Light, Tug of War, The Glass Bridge, and of course, the Squid Game itself. Continuing on this foreboding train, a number of characters' deaths in the show are foreshadowed in their lives outside of the game after the vote is called to stop it. For instance, Kung Sebaok holds a knife to a man's throat and tells him she'll rip it open, which is similar to her death at the hands of scumbag Cho Sang Woo. Another resident scumbag, Jung Deok Soo's death is foreshadowed as he jumps off of a bridge after being trapped by some gangsters trying to kill him, just like the moment he falls to his death from the glass bridge in the game. Ali also steals money and leaves a man to die, just like Cho Sung Woo does to him in the game, while Cho Sung Woo lies in a bathtub in a drenched suit, foreshadowing his fight with Song Gi Hun in the rain wearing a drenched suit. Still with the foreshadowing, at the arcade, Song Gi Hun picks a certain prize to give to his daughter due to the way it looks. Ironically, the box just so happens to resemble the coffins the players are placed in when they're eliminated, while the box has a realistic looking gun lighter inside, perhaps indicating the true violence of the games. Now this one's a bit contentious, but Song Gi Hun wins 4.5 million at the racetrack, and seeing as his number in the game is 456 and he wins 4.5 million and there are six zeros in a million, maybe that's also foreshadowing his number? Maybe? One of the most notable visuals in the show are the uniforms and masks the guards wear in the games. Seeing as the soldiers are basically indistinguishable wearing the same costumes, they're given different shapes on their masks so people can tell the difference, with the circle representing workers, the triangle representing soldiers, and the square representing managers. And I have to admit, it's a game show and these look like PlayStation symbols to me, so maybe there's that too. However, the shape of the mask and the different roles they have were based on ants and an ant colony, which fits with the animal mask theme seen throughout the show. Another notable visual is the colorful and intricate staircase the players must ascend to get to the next game. Now, if those stairs seem familiar to you, there's a good reason for that. That's because they were inspired by Escher's Relativity, which is a lithograph print by the Dutch artist MC Escher and depicts a world in which the normal laws of gravity do not apply. This is pretty fitting, seeing as the laws of the normal world and society do not apply in the world of the games, or hell as the players call it. 
Jung Ho Yeon stole many a person's heart with her performance as Kung Se Bayok, with many fans falling in love with the character. What makes it even more impressive is that this is actually her first ever acting role. But Koreans will likely be very familiar with Jung Ho Yeon, as she is a well known fashion model in the country and was a runner up in the fourth contest of Korea's Next Top Model. Also, Lee Byung Hun, who plays the enigmatic frontman, is a well established actor in Korea and has also appeared in a number of Hollywood movies such as The Magnificent Seven, G.I. Joe, and Terminator Genesis. When it comes to the green jumpsuits the players wear, the show's creator, Huang Dong Hyuk, was actually inspired by school uniforms and the outfits he used to wear as a kid. Initially, he was going to go all in on the school uniform aesthetic, but that would have included shorts, so instead opted to go with the green tracksuits, which were also picked so the red color of blood would pop on screen. The hot pink worn by the guards was picked, as it's on the complete opposite side of the color wheel from the green, showcasing that the guards and players are on different teams and are opposites of one another. Now, while the Squid Game is unfortunately embroiled in plagiarism claims, with some stating it as a copy of the 2014 Japanese movie As God Wills, Huang Dong Hyuk has claimed that his inspiration was Menwa, which are Korean comics that he used to read as a child. Before it got the title The Squid Game, it actually went by another, admittedly, much more boring name. In 2019, Netflix announced the show was to be called Round 6, which is in keeping with the six different games the contestants play, but this was eventually changed to the much more fun title Squid Game. The Squid Game is visually stunning and very aesthetically appealing, with the big immersive sets where the games are played being especially captivating. Surprisingly though, these sets were actually built for real, with very little VFX used in the show. And for instance, the set used for Red Light Green Light, including the robotic girl, were actually built for real, all of which allowed the actors to fully immerse in the scene. With the crazy amount of foreshadowing and intricate storytelling, it's not surprising to learn that the script has actually been in development for some time. In fact, Huang Dong Hyuk actually started the script all the way back in 2008, finishing the first draft in 2009, but still having to wait 10 years to successfully pitch it. Still, he had to wait to actually finish the series, with filming at one point postponed due to COVID. As we said, very little VFX were used in the show, and not only were the sets real, but the amount of contestants who played the game. For the Red Light Green Light game, there are indeed 456 actors in the scene, instead of digitally inserting people into the scene in post. And finally, let's end on some goofs, shall we? A what? Ugh. One of the best goofs in the show comes down to a typo, as when the frontman reviews the former glass factory workers file during the bridge game, the file reads that he had been working in the factory from 1897 to 2020, meaning that the character could be well into his hundreds. Another goof comes when Gihan enters the password for a credit card which he took from his mom secretly in the first episode and enters 0426 as his birthday. Later on, we see his file in the frontman's room and it says it's actually on Halloween. Whoops. <laughs> While a season 2 has yet to be confirmed, the show has been one of the most popular on Netflix in over 22 countries since its release and has caused Korean media stock to go up by 50%. With season 1 ending on somewhat of a cliffhanger, expect us to be returning to the games very soon.